Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. We've been talking about the income statement, what it is, why we use it, how it's used by different groups, and then creating an income statement. We got to play in Excel, and it was so much fun, wasn't it? Now we get to continue our discussion, because the example that we've been looking at is what we call a multi-step income statement. It's the most involved, the most informative, but also the hardest and the most informative, which means that it's good for investors, but bad for competitors, meaning we run the risk of giving them so much information that they can catch on to our competitive advantage, and, and we often don't want to do that. So instead, we have some other formats that we can use. We're going to take a look at each one. There's a single step and condensed that are allowed with the multi-step under GAAP, and then there's the IFRS format that we need to talk about so that we can compare and contrast. Now, the easy way to do this is to just go back to the template that we just created. Here's our income statement that we created. Well, off to one side, you probably noticed that there were these other lines. Well, I've built in the examples of these other kinds of statements. So if you'll scroll with me up to the top and then move a little to the right, I'm going to highlight this area right here and I'm just going to make it red. And there is a single step income statement. Now this format isn't used very often, except by small companies. The idea with the single step is instead of having gross profit and income from operations and income from continuing operations before taxes and then net income, I just do one calculation. And you can see it here. I've taken my total revenues and added them up, taken all my expenses and added them up, and I shortened them here. I can list all of my selling expenses and all of my administrative expenses, but in this case I just shortened it. But I put all of those together, add them up, and do one calculation. Total revenues minus total expenses. That's my single step. But you can see it gives us the exact same net income number as the one we just calculated. So it still works. We've just taken out a lot of information and we've gotten rid of that nice formal style that we were looking at. The next option is what we call a condensed income statement. And if you just scroll down starting in row 29, again I'm going to highlight several rows here. There's my condensed income statement. Same basic format, still comes out to that same net income number, but this time what I've done is take out information. All the steps are still there. You can see we've got our gross profit, we've got income from operations, we've got income uh, from continuing operations before taxes, and then we've got net income. So I have the same set of steps as a full-blown multi-step income statement. I've just gotten rid of all the details and made everything one line. So I have one line for selling expenses, one line for admin, one line for other gains and losses. That's it. Provide a lot of information because you can see the steps, but I've taken out all the account detail. Again, both of these really good for companies that are A, small, that's what we usually see a single step for because they don't want to go to the hassle of doing all the steps, or a company that's worried about getting rid of a, or losing a competitive advantage, and that's where we see this condensed version. Still following all the different steps, still satisfying FASB and the SEC, but taking out anything a competitor could use. Now the last kind of income statement isn't actually a gap statement. Instead, it's an IFRS statement, but we still want to take a look at it. So I'm going to scroll up to the top again and scroll over to the right a little bit further. I'm going to start up here in column M and scroll all the way down to that green line. And you can see it's a very different format than US GAAP. It still gives us the same number, which by the way is an anomaly. Usually there's enough differences between US GAAP and IFRS that they don't come out with exactly the same number, but in this case I wanted you to just see format changes, so that's the only thing I changed. But you can see it's a very different style. So all the numbers are there, they've just been broken up in a very different way. What we do in US GAAP is we report everything by function. Operating expenses, selling expenses, advertising expenses, the function of those expenses and costs. Under IFRS, we don't do it by function, we do it by nature. So we group things together by their categories. You can see a couple of the categories down here. Revenues, cost of goods sold is the same, but now down here in this section, you can see I put all of the employee expenses together. They're, they have the same nature, those expenses. The different office expenses, my selling expenses, and then I have some miscellaneous expenses that just don't fit anywhere else. This is breaking it down by nature. You can see too the rent revenue is up here. And then I've got my finance expenses. They don't call it interest, they call it finance expense. 
and then a tax expense. And instead of using net income, they call it profit for the period. Not significant differences, mostly just style, but still it takes some adjustment to think about an IFRS statement as opposed to US GAAP statement, just because we're not used to it. Let me take just a second. We've looked at it now. I want to highlight a couple of the key differences between US GAAP and IFRS. So let's take a look here. First, in an IFRS statement, there aren't any set rules. The US GAAP income statement is pretty standard. It has a specific way it's supposed to look. And we can tweak it a little, but not significantly. Under IFRS, you have a lot of flexibility how you want to actually show it. The only real rule is, is that you have to disclose expenses by nature. Again, we talked about this. US GAAP discloses by function. IFRS allows you to show in your income statement either nature or function, but if you don't show them by nature, then you have to put that down in your footnotes somewhere. So if you choose to do an income statement closer to GAAP, so it has operating expenses, administrative expenses, then down in your, you'd have a footnote somewhere that would show and here's what our income statement would have looked like if I'd categorized my expenses by nature instead of by function. So I have to have that nature breakdown. The other thing are the elements. So as opposed to having a set format, it has to look like this. They tell us we have to somehow disclose that nature categorization. And then we have to show our revenues. We have to show our finance or interest costs. We have to show any profit or loss from joint ventures, subsidiaries, etc. A joint venture means two companies going in together and, and we each own a significant portion of it. Tax expense has to be shown separately. If you have any discontinued operations, which we'll talk about later. And finally, you have to show profit or loss, the IFRS equivalent of net income. So these are the things you have to show. Now the order you show them in or how you break it down, that's up to you, but you have to at least include these items. And one of the key things here is you can't just lump them together. So I can't have income tax listed with all my other operating expenses or interest, excuse me, finance charges or finance costs lumped together with all my other expenses. Those line items have to be broken down separately under IFRS. So those are the major differences between the styles of income statement. We looked at a multi-step income statement, the most common under US GAAP. We looked at condensed and single step also allowed by US GAAP, and then we looked at an IFRS statement. And in our next segment, we'll start talking about what else we can do with our income statement, what other things can be added. I'll see you then.